You're listening to Articulate with your hosts, Kevin Kramer and Sean Gillespie, your go-to guys for art tips, techniques, and general artist ramblings. Presented by drawingandcoloring.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Articulate, the podcast where we talk about everything art. Everything. <laughs> and I'm your co I'm your host, Kevin Kramer, and co-host... Sean, Sean Gillespie. Hey. Who is completely being weird right being now. Unprofessional. I don't know what's being unprofessional. Being unprofessional today, Kevin, because <laughs> it's kind of fitting to our topic, which is advertising is art, or is art advertising, or is advertising art, which... Is advertising art. Right. Which it's, is uh, uh, fitting to my being unprofessional, because... A lot of professional artists might argue that advertising is not art, but we're going to get to that in some, a minute. Yeah, some of them do. Yeah. So let's little go a little backstory here okay. first. So where uh, where does advertising come from, uh, Kevin? As far as print advertising, obviously we're not going to be focusing on radio and all that other business. Print. Well, a lot of it actually started mm-hmm. with cartoons and things like mm-hmm. that, all right. and then it evolved into more elaborate mm-hmm. kind of depictions of the products right. and different things. Yeah, so my research was saying like around the 1860s, yeah. uh, 1800s About really 18, is when you yeah. started getting the more detailed art, like Toulouse-Lautrec advertising right. the Moulin Rouge, exactly. uh, a lot of French ads for wine and you know yeah. everything else. Uh, and also, one interesting... Uh, Ad, ad that seems to get a lot of attention when talking about is advertising art oh, yeah? or uh, is a ivory soap ad which had a woman with a parasol sitting there and it was very an impressionistic painting uh-huh. and uh, and you wouldn't even have known it was an ad except for just the little words ivory soap I down actually at the bottom. I yeah. did come across that and, myself uh, and that painting is called Summer Breeze <laughs> which is interesting because it's very similar to Monet's Woman with a Parasol. Right. Although, I think we all know who came out a little ahead exactly. as far as who did the better painting. I mean, Monet, come on. So I'm not comparing the two, but saying that if it didn't have those words, one might argue that that would just be art as opposed to advertising, but those words make all the difference as they do. far as a thing. So it's interesting. And... I know I was doing a little bit of reading, and I found that Georgia O'Keeffe's uh, painting yeah. uh, was used in a uh, Dole pineapple commercial. Really? Uh, yeah, or a print ad for Dole pineapple. Interesting. Uh, and so you get a lot of things like that. And one of your heroes, uh, Alphonse. Yeah, let's yeah. let's tell us about Alphonse a little Alphonse bit. Alphonse Mucha. He <laughs> was set. Well, he actually started with the Sarah Bernhardt a mm-hmm. lot, but he his work got so popular that everybody wanted to make it. Mm-hmm into their products or right. just kind of incorporate it in cigarette ads and right. all these different things. And, and pretty much creating the entire Art Nouveau movement. Exactly. In advertising and everything it, else from it, his art. You could argue that it actually started mm-hmm. that contemporary style of right. art right. In, in the advertising. We're not, we're not going to argue that. Well, <laughs> no, no, no. But so, <laughs> so my point, though, is that without advertising... You know, his art would have been amazing and beautiful, of course, as it is, right. but it wouldn't have been the far-reaching entire movement that it became, the, right. the, an Art Nouveau movement. True. Yeah. yeah. So you could say that it actually and, created a vehicle for right. him to get more publicity. And same with Art Deco, too. Yeah. You know, Art Deco, you it starts off as paintings, or, you know, you maybe it doesn't even start off as paintings, but you True. see it in paintings, and then ads, and then buildings, and then, you know, it just moves, it becomes ubiquitous to the culture. And that's that's one other that's one thing that I was reading about the Smithsonian mm-hmm. is there's a lot of debate whether the advertising in the Smithsonian is art mm-hmm. or just garbage that shouldn't even be yeah. kept on. Record. That seems to be a hotbed of argument on the that old seems on to the be old interwebs. Really, yeah. really hard up for those debates yeah. there. There's a lot of artists, uh, historians, art historians, I guess artists probably don't care, yeah. but a lot of art historians who are flame oh, yeah. mad and they throwing things. They're so mad. Yeah, the they're ready to burn the place down because, yeah. they, like you said, the Smithsonian, who is, you know, they're, they're, I mean, they also have the ruby slippers from the Wizard of Oz and things like that. I mean, the Smithsonian is really, a, they're, a the, museum of culture. Right. And that's the one that's right. one of the main arguments right. with a lot of the people that say, well, it is art. It should right. be put in there. Right. It's like it should encompass all of the cultural right. icons and things like Coca-Cola. Yeah. 
is in there. Right. I mean, when I think of the Smithsonian, I don't think of it as an art museum. I think of it no. as a cultural right. you know, history museum. Exactly. More it's more like thing. Almost like a natural history museum, but yeah. human exactly. pop culture. <laughs> right. Pop culture museum. Pop culture, yeah. And so uh, so I feel like it belongs there. I, feel, I have no problem with it being there. Yeah, I don't but either. I think a lot of uh, people on the art historians and people on the internet feel like it that advertising shouldn't belong in any museum because they feel like corporations are using that to take advantage of right. the kind system. Right, kind of seed in. Yeah, seed in. But my argument is a lot of those companies don't even exist anymore. Now, True. some of them, like Coca-Cola, of course do. Right. But a lot of them but don't. If... It's almost a debate on, it is pop culture, obviously, right? but pop culture changes the way people see the world, like art does. Right. Well, before, I guess, in order to determine whether or not advertising is art, we really got to, we really need a, a really good definition of what art is. So, I don't have one, <laughs> so I'm going to preface this by saying that. But I was reading uh, art historian um, Mary Warlick's words, and she has a definition of art in which advertising does not fit into her definition. I think and, I actually found that myself. Oh, did you? Yeah. Well, I'm going to read it, quote, I'm going to have to look down and read it here, because uh, I don't want to mess it up. I want to quote her exactly, because I felt like it was very interesting, uh, and you could tell that she put a lot of thought into it. Yeah. Um, so, her words were... Uh, and this is Mary Warlick. She said, "Art is a visual, or art is a visual imagery that is meant to elevate thinking and aesthetic context. And an aesthetic context. What advertising does is give a visual record of our culture, ambience, and history, our taste, our trends, our wants, our needs, our buying. It is never meant to elevate us to that higher plane. So that's her feeling is that art." must elevate us to a higher plane and if it doesn't elevate us then it's not art but that's a hell of a definition <laughs> yeah that's that to me I, she's obviously a very intelligent woman i've never met her um, but i feel like art doesn't necessarily have to elevate us i feel like art can simply show you a truth or show you an image and then it's still art but like, you could also argue that if you see that truth does that not elevate you to the next well level? but i mean can't advertising and there's the argument the all right and then okay and so let's think of this scenario too because i was thinking about that and i was reading that and i was like well yeah you know that's true but then you've got the issue of well who is the artist with advertising you've got true. the artist that. who's you know well, the graphic design artist or the whoever you know created the original image and they may have a total different agenda than true. their image is used for right. you know once the the copy and everything is added to exactly it. and so but they can still put in their own words like even if they Don't even, style, yeah even like, if they know that it's going to be in advertising like say say hypothetically mm. say a a disgruntled artist is working for a corporation, which I'm sure has never happened. No, why but would that? yeah, why would that that, how would that even happen? But uh, let's say that there that that did happen, and okay. that they're working Give you the on of the doubt. an ad. They could surreptitiously put in so their own meaning into it that maybe doesn't shed you know look yeah. favorably on the product, and maybe nobody even notices, and they put it out there. Well, but it makes you think. It yeah. makes you think like, well, hmm. Right. You know? Kind of like that that uh, Lion King, smoke in the air, sex written in the smoke type of deal. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like hidden things like, yeah, yeah. Though, you know, not not exactly. Not quite like that. <laughs> not but quite like that. But some yeah, level of that. Yeah, yeah, but like, you know, um, sort of like how... Um, but then again, you get in the argument of, is that art? What is, is it? Right. That's well, the, yeah. I mean, that's, that's just, just him, him putting being in his own... A, a, you know. you know, whatever he wants to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I mean, but my point is, he, he could there. push his own message into it, True. which could elevate. You know, it that's could. My so I'm not, you know, I know we're grasping at straws yeah, you're here. Just pulling. It would be overshadowed right. by the product being right. displayed. I think, mm -hmm. but I think the argument with that is, if it is, if it's a product that elevates people to new heights. Wouldn't that still be considered... It's... Like soap. What are we talking about here? Like soap got rid of bacteria and it's illness. True. It's true. Well, and then you also have the issue of propaganda versus true. advertising, where propaganda is selling you an idea or a call to action, and true. advertising is selling you a physical product. 
Right. So, and I mean, definitely, if you look at World War II posters, propaganda posters, I mean, they're very artistic. Yeah. The, yeah. I mean, they're iconic and they're... Everybody knows that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Just doing that. Yeah. You know and the doing. you thing. Right. And I mean, you know, Uncle Sam and all, I mean, all that. But is that art? Right. That's the question. I mean, it's... There's artistic merit. Yeah. But it, it's intention to persuade somebody, is that make it not art? I don't know. I mean, Shepard Fairey definitely modeled his art yeah. aesthetic after exactly. propaganda posters, and people call him an artist. I mean, exactly. he's not... Was he drawn you know, on that mentality of the right. the propaganda art? Well, the or? Hope poster, you know, that he did of... Uh, Does that not elevate? Is that art? I don't know. I don't know. That, is it? Some would beg to differ. I mean, definitely get a lot of argument on that. Definitely with the stolen photo and all right, that. Right, well, yeah. I, I mean, mean, he got a little sued for that one. A little bit, but... Interesting, it's, uh, yeah. It's it's more of a question of taste, I think, more than anything. It is. I mean, well, it's, it's definitely a question of taste, but it's also a question of what art is to you as far True. as whether or not a thing... Interesting fact, I was actually an advertising major. <laughs> really? Yeah. Awesome. Right, and the reason I became an advertising major is because I was thinking that, well, as an artist, as a freelance artist, I would never make any money, but right. I could be a an advertising, still use your work skills. in arts, you still use my skills, but have a career. Exactly. I never worked in advertising, and I worked as a freelance artist, and turns out I was right. I have yeah. no money, so... <laughs> There you go. Well, that's but, a whole nother issue to right. go down. But so, I mean, but my point is I, I majored in that because as an artist, I wanted to work in yes. advertising because it was a, a way for right. a, an artist to make a living making art. So I definitely thought of it at that time right. as art. But now not But so now, much. now I don't know. And after reading about this, here's how I feel about it. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm on the fence. Okay. Here. I'm kind of in the middle. <laughs> on, yeah, okay. I'm, All right. I'm in the... I'm in the... Okay. Just I will not give say... Give your point. Give I, your point. Well, I will not say that all advertising is art. Okay, I'll agree with that. But I'll say that some advertising is definitely artistic. And okay. I would say that art can definitely be used in advertising. Right. And I would say that culturally and historically advertising advertisements that are artistic and are beautiful should be preserved and should be um you know viewed by uh, open to the public but whether or not i feel like a wine ad from france in the 1800s should be next to a monet painting from about the same time i, I don't feel like they should no I think they should be definitely categorized. It's it's like comparing apples to oranges. So you can't. Well, I mean, yeah. I feel like art museums should have paintings, right? And Smithsonian or cultural museums should have ads. But what about a? You know, you were talking about you went to a, a museum that had a, a right. There's show at yeah, the rotating in Dallas. There gallery. was the Paris, the posters of Paris, which was right. all advertising art. Right, and it was in an art gallery. It was our art museum. Exactly. And it went through the entire history of mm -hmm. how they were made, the prints, everything, mm -hmm. right. why they were used. Mm -hmm. And everything in that gallery I would definitely consider art. Right. And some of it didn't have text. Some of it did. Right. But, but take one of those posters out and put it in the middle of a regular museum next to paintings. It all of a sudden feels weird. All of a sudden it feels a, a little style. wrong. It's a different style. Yeah. That's the problem. Is it's, it's like taking a graphic designer's work off of Illustrator, mm -hmm. Adobe Illustrator, and putting it in a museum next to a Monet. Yeah, but I mean, you can walk through a regular museum and you see like you know Monets next to Dollies, and you know you've got your more contemporary room, and then you go into you know they're they're divided up by period rather than style. Well, a lot but then of you times. could get into the differences of. Most advertising art is made by print. It's true. Prints, yeah. lithographs, yeah, it's all of true. those so different print things. versus actual so physical painting. Yeah, I if get you, you really want to so break it down, maybe the issue is that it's print. Is what you're saying? I think is that why would does, be why the, people feel like it doesn't belong I in a museum. I think that would be the best way. But even if you've ever, I went to that that uh, gallery. The print process is no easy task. What about Warhol? 
I was going to get into that. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say, because you'll definitely go and you'll see a Warhol exactly. right next to a Dolly and all that. Too. But those are more in modern museums. Yeah. It's like, it's, you're not going to find and that with older master work. Warhol's painting, I mean, or Warhol's prints, Campbell's suit. They weren't ads for Campbell's suits, but... Technically, they could be. I mean, technically, yeah. No, I haven't ever looked into this, but has Campbell's suit used those images in their ads since then, you think? I don't know. Or something similar? I mean, why would they not? You know? I can't see. They're, like, they're iconic. I right. don't know how they couldn't either. Right. But... So, I mean, yeah. is that art? I mean, that's definitely... You're definitely going to see Warhols and definitely going to see the Campbell soups in any museum. That's... Exactly. And that's straight product placement. Right. Totally. Uh, so, where's the mm. line? I don't know. It's a gray area. It's super <laughs> I'm gray. conflicted. So, the, I'm these, so are my, these, are, these are my criteria. All right. If it's a different process or medium, mm -hmm. it's in its own category. Okay. Obviously. All right. If it's showing a... If it has text on it, mm -hmm. I think that should be a criteria. Okay. Because if you look at old, all old, old paintings and all, they don't have text. They don't have lettering in them, most part. Not a lot. No, I can't think of any right you off. Don't the see top. a Monet with the yeah, where it's just like, I was here. Right. You don't put lilies. Exactly. You don't check them out. Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> yeah, no. So I think if there's text on it, mm -hmm. then it's advertising. It's gonna be more in advertising. Mm -hmm. But. If you break that down, obviously the artist creating it has his own style, his own thing. He's going to put his own taste and artwork into it. So you could technically take that, take the text off of it, and put it somewhere else and use it, which has also been done. Yeah. So that would be art, and then you just put text on it, and it's advertising. Right. But so does it does at when it becomes advertising, does it necessarily cease to be art? That's the I guess the question. I don't think so. No? Okay. I could see that. I, I definitely think that advertising can sometimes be art. Right. But I also feel like there's a lot of uh, people that, you know, and I was reading on doing my research for this podcast, you know, mm -hmm. I was read a lot of people who were saying that that because it's trying to sell you something, right. it's not art. Right. But I would argue that. Every written word or every painting, every image, every photograph, anything is selling you something. Exactly. It's either selling you an idea, selling you stories, selling you just an image of this person. I mean, it's everything is, is yeah. selling you it's, something. It's all influence. Right. I mean, I had a professor in school who said, uh, you know, that a lot of people, the common thing they say is, you know, prostitution is the oldest form of employment. And yeah. he would say, no. Advertising is because she had to advertise. It's true, <laughs> that she was a prostitute. You gotta go even further, right? Away. So, and yeah. then I argued that well, then art is because she probably had to get some dude to write up on the cave. Hey, right, right here is where you want to get this done. Stick Let figures. me draw you what she's gonna do. You know, <laughs> so some provocative yeah, stick right. figures. <laughs> and then you could argue that oh no, the guy that sold the pencils. You know, I don't know. Anyway, you can keep going and going and going and going with that. Yeah. But the point is uh, that. Advertising is as old as the day is young. You know, I mean, it goes it goes way back to the beginning of time. It does, I and mean, art right there with it. You know, inseparable. Right. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think you can separate the two. No, and, and, and especially if you're trying to sell anything. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, if you look at any kind of lettering or text or anything, that's an art in itself. Yeah, it is. It so. Is. You have to have some kind of art or background, craft. some kind of craft, some kind of knowledge of art mm -hmm. to make advertising. Yeah. So if you want to divide those up, then you're going to be missing a key piece to either one of them. Yeah. So that's yeah. me yeah. not choosing a side at all. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Where are we on this debate? We're basically... Email us your opinions is where yeah. we are. You know, yeah. what, what do, do you think? think? Do you think art is advertising? Do you think that art or advertising can be art? Where's the line? Where is the line? I don't think. You know what I really hate? I hate it when I watch a show mm. or a sitcom about like aliens, do they exist and all that? And uh, then you get to the end and they're like, aliens. we don't know. You decide. Right. And that really pisses me off every time I see one of those. And as I'm doing this right now, I realize that's what we're doing. You're pissing yourself off. I'm pissing myself off. So I'm going to make a stand. I'm going to say advertising can be art. But I'm going to stick with that one, too. Yeah, but it isn't always. I'm going to say that. You just... <laughs> I'm just saying. Undermine Not always. Not always. I'm saying, but it can be. It definitely is. 
with certain things happening under this. I'm saying that it definitely can be. I'm going to say that not all art is art. Not all paintings are art. No. You know? Okay. I'm going to say that well, right maybe now. Not, maybe not. Uh... I've seen some paintings that are not art. Not in a museum. Right? Right. Although, <laughs> I have seen some sculptures. No, yeah, I've seen some paintings that I would not consider art in museums. I'm going to go there, too. Oh, yeah? You're gonna, yeah, you're gonna, I'm going to go gonna there. Pull those people out? I am, I'm going to say that I've seen some crap in museums that I would not consider art. You That's know? true, yeah. yeah. Especially modern. <laughs> Especially <laughs> when you get into those people that just have the blank canvas. Oh, I'm representing... The absence of everything. I'm no, you lazy motherfucker. You just stuck an <laughs> empty canvas up there because you couldn't think of anything to paint. I know what you did. I've been there. I thought, hey, why don't I just give them an empty canvas? And you know, you can't do that. It's thought provoking. No, no, I'm on to you. It's thought provoking. There's a lot of there's a lot of artists out there who just selling uh, selling a little BS. Selling selling the idea. Selling. Of an oh yeah, this represents my inner angst. No, it represents red dot your hand canvas. hurting that day, a little carpal tunnel, and, you know, some in some cases. Lack of planning. Not all. Not but all. if you took that red dot on the canvas, put Coca-Cola on it. Oh, man. Advertise. That'd be a good ad, too. It would be. I don't know. Maybe it if would be. If you made the progression from art and then you did boom, 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 then put the Coke on it, mm -hmm. that'd be a commercial. There you go. Man, look at you just giving out free commercials to Coke. You can send really. your money to <laughs> trademarked, yeah. copywritten. Right. Kevin, care of care of Kevin Kramer there. This guy. All right. So so there we go. So we'll, we'll, basically what we said is advertising can be art. I think so. But it isn't always. And art can be art. But, but it, it isn't, isn't always. <laughs> so basically. it is. Everything but it can be, but it isn't. But it might be sometimes. But it definitely belongs in a Smithsonian. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm not, whoever, those, those guys. I yeah. won't debate that one. Yeah, those guys. Those dudes need to just. They just need to get it, yeah. get it, move on. Just guys. chill out. It belongs in the Smithsonian. If the Ruby Slippers if do. You can't. If you go Wizard of Oz. If you go Wizard of Oz it up in the Smithsonian, then some ads belong in there too. Definitely. Uh, and I like the Smithsonian. I love this. One of my favorite places to go when I go to the D.C. area. I've never been. I need to go. Really? It's awesome. I know. Well, I have, I've heard. <laughs> go. I will. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. I think that wraps this one up. Yeah. Today. So, so. Yeah. again, what do you think Email is art? Email us your thoughts. Yeah. What do you yeah. think is art? What is advertising? Yeah. In the comments below, let us know. Yeah. If you're watching comment. This. Let's start a big debate here, man. Yeah. I mean, I know we're gonna get trolled here. Be like, me, John's covered in pain. He's gross. But kind true. <laughs> it's kind of true. I am kind of gross today. Yeah. I've been working. On. But on art, actually on advertisement, exactly. because my murals that I'm working on have the logos. Exactly. Wow. You're on the gray area. I'm in that gray area myself. Floating in the middle. Man. Well, that's an interesting point. Because yeah. I'm doing four murals for this uh, apartment complex. Two of them have their ad and their logo, or their sign and their logo, but two of them don't. So are we saying that two of them are art and two of them aren't? Then you get into logo design. I know, so man. It's just Can too be. much. Man, I'm here too doing much. crazy things. Time to cut out. We're done. Time, time to done with this. Email us your thoughts. Leave us your comments. And let's debate this. Yeah. All right. And if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe over there. Is it over there? Oh, it's over there. Over Actually, there? I remember where it's at now. Okay. It's on that side. All right. Right there. Subscribe on YouTube. Leave your comments below in this video. Share it with a friend. Let us know what you think. Is art advertising? Is advertising art? I don't know. You decide. Let Tell us know. Us. Let us know. All right. Yeah, we should do one on propaganda sometime, too. Yeah, I think that'd be a good yeah, one. Yeah, I kind of got excited when I thought about it. <laughs> All right. See y'all next time. See you later. You've been listening to Articulate with Kevin and Sean. Subscribe on iTunes or check them out on drawingandcoloring.com. Always reminding you to keep it simple.